Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. And today we have a review of episode 897, Save Otama, Straw Hat Bounding Through the Wasteland. And after God knows how long in the anime, it has finally happened. Luffy has officially reunited with Zoro. And I have to say that this episode had me smiling every bit as much as when this happened in the manga. There is just something ever so satisfying about seeing this pair together, because for me, this combination is really where One Piece all began. Like, yes, everything started with Roger and then Luffy and Shanks, but the true adventure did not kick off until Luffy recruited Zoro. And ever since then, they have been an incredibly dangerous duo. And this episode did a great job of making that clear with the ending. I particularly love Mayumi Tanaka's performance of a line about having to apologize to Kinemon later. It had this incredible combination of mischievousness and seriousness wrapped up into a neat little package aimed directly at the face of Basil Hawkins. And just while we're on him, I very much enjoyed the new direction the anime appears to be taking in regards to his abilities. The aura around his cards gives this character a renewed sense of power and mysteriousness. And this effect was not in the manga. In there, the cards just appear as regular objects as they always have, but I do really like it. And it's getting me pretty excited to see some of the other crazy stuff that Hawkins can do performed in this new manner of stylization. This also extends to the new designated way in which the anime depicts observation Haki, which was very present in this episode, having been used multiple times by both Luffy and Zoro. Although in this case, primarily for comical effect. The first incident of which was Luffy taking note of the Nida Kitetsu, which the uh, Crunchyroll subtitles have just decided to call Kitetsu 2, maybe even Kitetsu the second, if that's how you want to read it, which is incredibly boring and quite possibly very inconsistent with their translations of Zoro's very own Sandai Kitetsu, which I don't think is called Kitetsu 3. And yes, look, I get that Kitetsu 2 is an accurate and straightforward translation, but this is where the whole pragmatism thing comes into it, because while it may be a technically acceptable translation, I don't think it conveys the pragmatic intention behind the naming scheme. It should really just be left in its full Japanese form, like almost every other weapon in the series. However, back to, uh, well, whatever point I have, had, Luffy using observation hockey to clock the weapon was not in the manga, and it was a pretty damn cool addition to the anime. Because as these events originally occurred, Luffy was just given an outfit, and then he appeared with the sword and said, I am taking this, okay, thanks, bye. But instead, what we have in the anime is another example of some intriguingly used creative license. Not only by having Luffy use observation hockey to acquire the sword, but more so with the incredibly unexpected guitar riff that underscored that moment. And to be honest, I did feel like the riff was a bit out of place, but that may be because I am just far too used to the established model of what the One Piece anime has been for as long as I've known it. At no other point in the life of this adaptation have directors been given the freedom or perhaps even pursued the freedom to add in these little bits of flair. And I am all for that because as much as this moment may not have worked so well for me, there have been others in previous episodes that have caught me off guard in a very good way. And that is a nice feeling in and of itself. The idea that even though I've read the manga, I don't know exactly what's coming or how it will be portrayed. It is wonderfully refreshing and contributes a large amount to making watching this one era of One Piece an enjoyable experience. But of course, there was another addition with Zoro using observation Haki. And as I'm prone to doing, I'm just going to need to point out that everything to do with Zoro prior to Luffy spotting him is filler. Very well done filler though. And I love that he essentially used his observation Haki for the purpose of spotting Sake. It's a joke that works so, so well within the world and these characters. But not only that, but these two filler uses of observation Haki actually do something much more powerful and go on to highlight the similarities between Luffy and Zoro almost entwining their stories before they actually properly meet up, which is fantastic. Fantastic. It shows a splendid amount of creative thought put into filler material that actually has something to offer this series that isn't just artificially elongating it. But make no mistake, this episode covered maybe two thirds of a chapter. And in the past, achieving such a low adaptation rate would have resulted in an absolute disaster of an episode. But somehow, right at this point in time, we appear to be living in a utopia where we can still adapt very little and still have a great time. But most importantly, it didn't feel like filler. Even I was shocked when I went back to the chapter and realized just how little progress we'd actually actually made, which is a huge credit to the new age of the One Piece anime. And while I'm here, I'd also just like to give a, a little PSA. A small group of very loud people tend to get slightly upset when I refer to events that were not in the manga as filler. And that's kind of understandable because filler has primarily negative connotations attached to it. And yes, I could find a wankier term like anime original material, but I'm not going to because I do want to truly embrace the idea that filler can be beneficial to this series. And furthermore, to those people out there who say that the anime is the final form of One Piece and that Oda actually adds in this material himself, you 
are wrong. The manga is the definitive story and the anime is an adaptation that is allowed to do its own thing for better or worse. So with that out of the way, I will say that one thing I wasn't so keen on was unfortunately the action this week. There were some fantastic parts which generally occurred anytime we had a close up of a sword. However, I felt Zoro's movements and slashes weren't anywhere near as fluid and satisfying as they appeared in the episode where he performed that amazing Tatsumaki. And that's not to say that what was provided during this episode was bad, not at all. It was just a noticeable dip in quality. And another negative I have actually has nothing to do with the episode whatsoever, but everything to do with the TV spot for One Piece Stampede that occurred at the end of the episode. For anybody who hasn't seen it and is not keen on having any potential Stampede spoilers thrown their way, my advice would be to not watch anything Stampede related until you've seen it. Now for me personally, I won't be seeing it for about a month because that's when it premieres in my country, but sadly Japan is doing that thing they do and choosing to show the climax of the film in their TV spots to sell more tickets. And yes, I haven't seen it, but I have heard from others who have that some of these TV spots show hugely spoilerific stuff, and I believe that entirely because that's exactly what they did with both Strong World and Film Gold, which showed Luffy's final attack and the defeat of the main antagonist in those respective films. But episode 897 cannot be blamed for that. Overall, it was great. I'm thrilled to be back in Wano after a two week break, and I could not be more excited to see some of the insane stuff that is coming our way pretty damn soon. But that pretty much does it for episode 897. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produced in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this but apply to other anime and manga series, then please do check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on the episode. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.